assalamu alaikum dear students today we will discuss about how to study english literature in today's lecture we will discuss some methods of studying literature dear students english literature is a complex subject and many students end up having to study it at some point with so many things to keep track of it can feel to even decide where to start whether you are studying for a test an ap exam or a college course you can take some steps to help you achieve your goals uh today we'll discuss some methods method number 1 is laying the groundwork in this method there are some further points to we'll discuss uh the first point is start early do not wait to study until the night before exam particularly with the subject such as english literature where you will probably be asked analytical questions as well as content questions you must have time to familiarize yourself with some of complexities of your material uh, being able to summarize the plot or name some character is unlikely to be all you need to do basically uh while uh, you have to start for your uh, as as you can mid exam final exam you should start early you sh- uh some students wait that uh, there is a time but you should start as being the student of english literature you st- you should start earlier for your preparation examine what you already know before uh, starting your preparation you should know that what you know already na write out all the details you can remember from your first reading of the text as well as anything you remember from your course lectures don't cheat cheat by looking at your notes or your text just write down what you are confident what you remember this will help your starting base and will reveal any gaps in your knowledge uh this is the thing you should examine yourself that what you know about your course work already know na consider whether there are literary terms you are unfamiliar with this is very important uh um, the thing which you have to deal with the literature many tests and exams in english literature want you to be familiar with some key terms such as tensa irony alliteration speaker and figurative language while you are not likely to be expected to have comprehensive knowledge of literary terminology understanding some of these key concept will be important to your success There are many guides available that can help you find definitions for important literary concept but there are a few crucial terms a stanza is a, a poetic division of lines and is equivalent to the paragraph in prose writing usually stanzas are at least 3 lines long group of 2 lines are usually called couplets irony is its basic level uh, says one thing but means another which is almost always the opposite of what is actually said for example a character who meets someone in a ragging uh, blizzard might say lovely weather we are having isn't it this is a this is ironic uh, ironic because uh, the reader can see that Uh, it is clearly not lovely weather william shakespeare jane austen and charles dickens are famous for their use of irony ironical statement are very tricky you should focus on these don't confuse irony with misfortune which elinis morris's songs ironic is culpable of a black fly in your chardonnay is definitely unfortunate but it's not ironic a speaker usually refers to the person from whose point of view a poem is given although it may also be used to refer to a novel's narrator keeping the speaker separate from the author is important especially in poetic drama monologues such as robert browning my last duchess in which a uh, uh, you can say manicaldic admits to having murder his wife 
obviously it is the speaker not browning who is saying in these these things figurative language is discussed in more length in part 2 of this article uh, but it is the opposite of literal um, you can say literal language figurative language is uses techniques such as metaphor similes personification and hyperbole to make a point more widely for example in shakespeare's play antony and cleopatra cleopatra describes mark antony his this way his legs bestride the ocean his reared arm crested the world this is hyperbolic language obviously antony's legs did not literally straddle the ocean but it powerfully conveys cleopatra's high opinion of him and his power basically these are the terms literary terms uh, every term is different from one another dramatic irony occurs when the readers or audience knows important information that a character does not such as the fact that edipus killed his father and will marry his mother so this is also an important aspect dramatic irony uh, alliteration is a technique used most often in poetry and plays it is the repetition of the same initial constants in multiple words within a short space peter piper picked a pack of pickled peppers is an example of alliteration basically this is the repetition of words look at sample questions if you can uh before you uh, you are going for your uh, preparation of exam you should know that uh, uh, which sort of question can be asked if you were given a study guide or sample question see how much of this material you are already familiar with this will help you uh, zone in on what needs more work and make a study plan uh now we are going to discuss method number 2 uh, you should uh, start with the rewrite rereading your text rereading Uh, of text you should have already read the text for class but if you are studying for an exam make sure you go back and reread it to catch things you missed out on the first time uh, basically this is very important aspect uh, for the preparation of your exam uh, rereading the text basically when you uh, used to reread the text you uh, cover all the things which you have missed look for a f- figurative language many authors use techniques such as metaphors similes and personification uh, to emphasize their points these may be crucial to understanding the literary works you are reading for example knowing that um, white whale in moby dick represent among other things captain ahab's uh, habris is essential to being able to understand melville's novel metaphor make uh, direct comparisons between two s- seemingly dissimilar uh, things they are stronger than similes for example the last line of uh, f scott a uh, novel the great gets by is a famous metaphor comparing human lives uh, to boats trying to make progress against a strong current so we beat on boats again the current born back seriously into the past similes also make comparison but they don't directly state that x is y for example uh, margaret mitchell uses a simile to describe scarlet o'hara uh, interest in ashley wilkes with a simile in her novel gone with the wind uh, the very mystery of him excited her uh, curiosity like a door that had neither lock nor key personification occurs when a, a non human animal or object is given human characteristic in order to express any an idea more powerfully for example emily dickens frequently uses uh, personification in her poems as in this poem about a snake a narrow fellow in the grass Okayanly rides you may have met him did you not his notice sudden is uh, so here the snake is a 
uh, narrow fellow who rides in the grass which makes it seem almost like a dashing victorian gentleman rather than a reptile consider the structure of your tux the way that an another expresses her uh, or his ideas is often is as important as the ideas themselves in many cases the form and structure of the text will have some kind of influence on its subject matter if you are reading fiction think about the order in which the events are recounted or their uh, you can say flashbacks or places in the narrative that cycle back in time um so if you are uh, reading the poetry think about the uh, form of the poetry what type of poem it is uh, is it something formally structured like a sonnet or sestina is it free verse which makes use uh, elements such as uh, you can say rhythm and alliteration but doesn't have a set rhyme scheme uh, the way the poem is written will often offer uh, clues as to the mode the poet wanted to convey so uh, when you are reading the poetry you should be very careful about these things think about character uh, a character although it also may be an action or situation that is believed to represent something universally recognized as part of human nature the psychologist carl uh, jung argued that collective unconscious of humanity and thus we recognize experiences we have shared with others in archetypes several types of literature analysis uh, have been influenced by jung so being familiar with some archetypes that may appear in your text will probably be useful the hero is a character who embodies good and often fights against evil in a struggle to bring justice or restore order blue wolf and captain uh, america are perfect example of the hero archetype basically uh, these all the terms of um, you can say uh, literature which which are very useful for any literary students the innocent youth is a character who is usually uh, inexperienced but home others like because of the faith he or she has in the other people uh, for example pip in the charles dickens novel great expectation is an innocent youth as is uh, from star wars often these archetypes will experience some sort of coming of the age in later parts of the story the mentor is tasked with caring for uh, protecting the main character through wise advice and assistance uh, Gandalf in J.J.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Ring the uh, the hobbit is an excellent example of a mentor archetype as is Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Star Wars movies The doppelganger is a character who doubles for the main character in order to represent the dark side of the hero or heroine common example of the doppelgangers include frankens and his creature in mary shelley's and uh, dr jekyll and mr head in the robert lois uh, novel of the same name the villain the uh, sorry the villain uh, is a character with evil plans whom the hero must oppose the villain will usually do anything to defeat the hero and is often and uh, to not always clever good example include sher khan from rudyard kipling's the jungle book uh, samyuk the dragon from the uh, hobbit and the joker from the batman comics and film think about your situational archetypes the other main type of archetypes you will probably uh, encounter is situational a uh, very familiar and Uh, expected type of plot and progression some common situational archetypes includes the journey this is an incredible common archetype and is referred in, uh, in everything from stories of king arthur to 
swift gullivers travel to um, in this archetype the main character undertakes a journey physical or emotional literal or figurative to understand something about herself himself or the world around as uh, her him or to achieve uh, an important goal often often the uh, journey is very important to the plot as with the fellowship of guests to destroy uh, sessions one ring in the lord of the rings the initiation this archetype uh, has similarities with the journey but the focus is more on the hero heroines developing maturity through their experiences this type of story may also be called a uh, bildens groman uh, henry fielding's tom john is an excellent example of this as are the origin of most comic book heroes for example peter parker's lesson about how to handle great powers and great responsibility as he becomes spider-man the fall this is another very common archetype in this archetype the main character experiences a fall from grace as the consequences of his or her own action example of the archetype are all all over classical literature including king lear from shakespeare play king lear a half from uh, melville's novel moby dick and saturn from john milton epic poem paradise lost consider how action develops from conflict for many texts particularly plays and fiction there is an inciting incident that sets the main action of the story in motion this moment disturbs the equilibrium of the situation poses a problem and sets off a series of events that will uh, form the rest of the story for example in shakespeare's macbeth macbeth hears a, a prophecy from a try of uh, which is that says he will become king of scotland while he has never wanted to be king until this moment the uh, the prophecy sets him on on a path of ambition and murder that eventually leads in his downfall as another example in uh, arthur miller's play uh, the crooked the crookable a group of young girls face a conflict they have been caught doing naughty things in the woods and face punishment to try to cover up their actions they accuse their f- fellow villagers of witchcraft this action incites the the rest of the play story which follows these uh, acquisition as they spin out of control now we'll discuss the method number uh, method 3 is here uh making useful notes for fiction and drama summarize each chapter or act in bullet points after you read through the text for the second time this will make a uh, future review easier as you will have a rough summary to work from uh, do not get too bogged down in summary you don't have to summarize every little things that happen in a chapter or act aim to note the main action of each one as well as any important character of thematic moments make out character profiles for each main character obviously main character is very important for anything including anything important that the character says or does along with links to other character in the text for plays you may want to note the speeches that seem particularly important such as hamlet's to be or not to be speech speech or the attention must be paid speech from arthur miller death of a salesman outline outline any problems the character face obviously uh, which sort of uh, you can say difficulties or problems a character will face you have to um, write down or you have to note down this can often be even more helpful than chapter summarize what challenges and conflicts do the main character face what are their goals for example uh, shakespeare's hamlet has several problem he need to solve uh, is the ghost of he, um, his father uh, urging him to seek revenge trustworthy how can he take a revenge on his uncle in court full of people who are watching his every move how can he overcome his natural tendency to overthink things to work up the courage 
to take the revenge he wants basically uh, every sort of problems which character face that's the part of your exam determine whether these problem are solved sometimes problems are solved fairly neatly at the end of a story the death star is destroyed in star wars the one ring is destroyed in arogan resorted and as king in lord of the rings sometimes problems are solved but not in ideal ways for example uh, for example hamlet does achieve his revenge and fulfill the ghost request but he also kills several in- innocent people along the way and un- ends up dead himself understanding whether characters achieved their goals or why they didn't will be useful in discussing the works in your exam remember some important statements made while you don't necessarily need to memorize important statement or speeches remembering what they are generally about can be very helpful when you go for make an argument about a text for example if you are studying jane austen pride and prejudice remembering that mr darcy admits to meddling in elizabeth's family affairs will be useful in explaining why they are so angry with each other early in the book for example he is too proud to admit that meddling really uh, was wrong and she is too prejudiced to admit he might have uh, had motivations that made sense make more detailed notes including the main themes in the text and how each character is important in the text don't skimp on detail here uh, nothing that the tone of uh, mary shelley uh, is very is sinister won't be much use in the exam if you don't have a way to describe what is making it feel sinister write down particularly wived women far from the text not only uh, can helps can help you remember what happened in a chapter they will give you evidence to use when you make claims about the text in your exam write down any symbol in the text and where the where they appear symbolism is a favorite tool of any author uh if some elements such as color or specific uh, item shows up more than once or twice is likely to be a symbol that represent re- represents something important for example in nathaniel hawthorne's novel the scarlet letter the uh, uh that hester pen must wear in punishment of her adultery is an obvious you can say symbol but her daughter pearl also serve as a symbol like the a uh, pearl is a remind of a adultery a token of a shame uh, hester often dresses pearl in beautiful gold and red dresses uh, physically l- linking her to the letter and the hester's crime look up contemporary con- connections it is often very uh, helpful to be able to reference in your exam or essay some important cultural or social issues that were relevant at the time a uh, text was first written use any course material you have along with introductions to critical editions of the text and reliable resources such as those found through a library library database to do a bit of research do not rely on websites such as wikipedia Uh, or your own knowledge of a period as both of these may be incomplete or inaccurate now we'll discuss the method number 4 uh, making useful notes for poetry poetry is very important aspect in literature so uh, note what type of poem you are dealing with so before dealing uh, with any sort of poem uh, you should know that uh, what type of poem that it is sometimes knowing the type of poem you are studying such as whether it is a sonnet or sestina or haiku can be very important to being able to discuss its meaning you can often determine what type of poetry you are dealing with by examining the rhyme scheme the pattern of the rhymes at the end of each line and the meter uh, the number of poetic feet each line has Many modern poets write in free verse but this doesn't mean they are not also paying close attention to the form of their poetry look for the elements such as alliteration um, 
assonance, repetition, uh, the breaking of poetic lines and the rhythm in the free verse poetry just as you would in more formally structured poetry. Identify the speaker and the audience of the poem when possible. This is particularly important for poems such as uh, dramatic monologues and where the speaker is de definitely not supposed to be the po uh, poet. Um, anyhow, um, uh, for example, Felicia Hemans, Robert Browning and Alfred Lord Tennyson all wrote dramatic monologues from the points of view of characters very different them than themselves. Identifying the speaker can uh, trickier in lyric poetry such as the type written by poets like Wordsworth or John Keats because they, these poems uh, are often written in first person um, but, don't know, but don't make a clear um, distinction between the speaker and the poet. Nevertheless, even in poems that are re uh, writing using uh, first person pronouns like I always refer to the speaker as the speaker not to the poet. Write down any symbols uh, in the poem and where they appear. Just as with the prose writing, symbolism shows up all the time in poetry beyond on the lookout for the repeated elements, especially things like colors or natural imagery. For example, in Williams Wordsworth poem, Tintin Abbey, the eye is an important symbol that represents many things including the poet's imagination. Wordsworth will often um, play on the uh, similarity of sounds between I and I, uh, further relating the two concepts. Uh, remember that you don't have to memorize the poems you are studying. Just make sure you know the basics such as structure of the poem, themes, and overarching idea of a story. Uh, it can sometimes be helpful to memorize a key line or two form a poem so that you can use it as evidence. For example, if you are studying Walt Whitman Hughes' uh, uh, poem, Leaves of Grass, you might want to memorize the short phrase, uh, dismiss whatever insults your own soul and your very flesh shall be a great poem. Uh, this short quotation encapsulates much of the meaning from the larger text and being able uh, to drop into an exam will help you uh, will help you support your claims uh, now we'll discuss the last method of, it, of of our today's lecture handling difficult text this is very important aspect reread uh, re passages you don't understand this is a technique that how you can deal with the uh, difficult text particularly in poetry Authors may use language unconventionally in order to make a more powerful impact on the reader. This can be confusing at first, but rereading, but rereading the passage slowly and carefully will reward your attention. Avoid skimming material. This is very important aspect, especially if you are reading poetry or plays. Reading everything is very important. Skip, uh, skipping things such as stage direction. Uh, in a Shakespeare play can mean you miss out uh, on uh, crucial information. Language in poems is precisely chosen and structured to have a particular um, effect. So missing even a word or two could damage your understanding of the whole text. This is very important. You should avoid. Read passages aloud. This technique works especially well with the poetry and plays but it can also work for long uh, dense passages of prose in a novel especially if it's something like a Charles Dickens novel where sentences can run to fulfill a paragraph. Reading the language aloud will help point out elements such as rhythm, alliteration and repetition which are all things that your exam may ask you to speak about. Make flashcards. If you are having trouble remembering things, make yourself some flashcards. Sometimes the transfer of material from one medium to another, from written notes to flashcards will help you learn it more effectively. Flashcards are especially helpful for memorizing things such as literary terms and character names. 
they may be less helpful for remembering more complex information uh, this is very important uh, for uh, for the student of literature making flash card is very uh, important aspect for the uh, preparation of your exam you can go through with this um, with very easier process so uh, that's all inshallah see you in next lecture allah hafiz